This is the Lego Star Wars spider tank. No, not that one that's actually cool. This weird one from The Mandalorian. Hello everyone, it is I, Republic Studs, and today we are going to take a look at this $50 The Mandalorian set based off of season three of the show, coming with two and a half minifigures-ish, probably closer to two and one third minifigures, coming with a whopping 526 pieces and retailing for $50. Now, I'll be honest, I am very opinionated on this set, and I have some serious issues with it. So hit that subscribe button, and we're gonna get right on into it. So the first thing we have to take a look at is the box art of this $50 LEGO Star Wars set. You have the piece count, the ages 9 and up. I'd say that's about a fair age, the LEGO Star Wars logo. Then we have a look at the spider tank playing around. This is a very uh, generous angle, I'd say, of this particular set. And then we have a look at the little Mandalorian caves in the background. Nothing crazy, obviously. This is like a very dark scene where you barely saw this particular creature. And then you have Mando and Grogu in the corner with the figure selection. Now, if you flip the box to their sides, you have a little uh, depiction of the set, which is nice if you're lining up all your boxes next to each other. Nothing here. We have a look at Bo-Katan on the top. And on the back, you have a look at some of the play features, which we will get to take a look at. And then you have all this stuff. So that's very cool. Now let's take a look at the instructions and then we'll get into the hyperlapse build. Now here's the instructions with the dumb looking digital renders. At least they have those little like imprints of Lego bricks so it like doesn't make it completely terrible. I don't like these digital re renders at all. Uh, for anyone who's watched a Republic Studs review, the guy we have running down here is yet again Mando. So he's gonna run through the instruction booklet and we're gonna run all the way to the end. Uh, and we have a look at the completed thing, all the features and stuff, and then we have a look at some of the new sets coming out. So we have all the Mandalorian and, I guess, Book of Boba sets on this side, and then we have a look at some of the new LEGO Star Wars sets on this side, including the new 332nd uh, set and Yavin 4, which is not featured on some of the other box arts. Now let's build it real quick, and then we're going to take a look at the figures. Now there's only one important minifigure in this set, and it is neither of these two. Also, by the way, I hope you enjoyed that time lapse. But this is the Mandalorian and Grogu, and the table keeps going down. So let's come on, let's get up there. Uh, but yeah, so we have Mando and Grogu. Uh, obviously, great minifigures, uh, but not anything special. That you, you do not get this set for them. It is completely useless. You do have that new Mandalorian Mando helmet, which looks really sharp with that shiny color. It's not just like. That other one we got a while back in the Razor Crest, uh, but it is cool. The unfortunate part about it is that we already get it in another set. Also, did I mention, by the way, I will leave a link to buy this in the description if you would like one and to support me and my endeavors. All right, so we have Mando, nothing special, nothing new. He does come with his very schmexy face print, so that's cool. It doesn't come with the hair, you know, because he didn't take off his helmet the whole season, but eh. And then we have little baby Grogu, who again is nothing special. He is the same baby Grogu that comes in literally every Mandalorian set now. Now let's take a look at the only figure that actually matters over here. She, she's having a bit, a bit of an issue, I guess. Here is Bo-Katan, and I gave her the Darksaber just because she wields it in this scene. So I feel like it makes the most sense for her to be holding it. Uh, but So yeah, so let's take a look at this actually gorgeous figure, because this is like the main point of the set. This is the only reason to buy this set, in my personal opinion. I wouldn't buy it if she didn't come in it. You have a absolutely gorgeous looking leg print. I'm going to try to zoom out there. You have a gorgeous leg print with a beautiful torso print. Look at that shine. That is very reflective, very great. You have a look at your night owl uh, arm printing, which is really neat looking, and then you could flip her around and you got another one. Uh, another one, as some would say. Thank you, DJ Khalid. Now, moving to the back, you have a little magnet thing for her to attach her little uh, jetpack to. Uh, I don't know how accurate that jetpack color is. And then, of course, you have the helmet. Let's take a look at that. It's very blue. I don't think we've gotten a bo -Katan in this helmet color yet. We've only gotten one other Bo-Katan, actually. Uh, so that's gorgeous. And then she does come with her two uh, blaster pistols uh, to hold. These are the ones she's advertised as holding. And then I think she looks at her best when she has her helmet off like this, and you could put on 
her hair. She looks so good with the hair. If you told me we were going to be getting this gorgeous figure a year, or th three, four years ago, I would have told you you were joking around or something. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, she looks fantastic. The face print is gorgeous. I, I love this. Oh, this is, th this is the set right here. This is the $50 price tag you pay. Everything else is just completely extra and useless and you really don't need it. You don't need the build. You don't need the other minifigs. You just need this Bo-Katan minifigure and you are golden. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. That's why this figure is going to be extraordinarily expensive while the build and the figures will be extraordinarily cheap. Now let's take a look at the build. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the build. Now I have plenty of thoughts on this and I will get into my more like practical reasons for why I hate it. Uh, but now I'll tell you my build reasons why I hate it. It doesn't look anything like the actual like thing. It doesn't come with that little guy, the little alien who lives in there, even though it leaves space for him to go in. Uh, but that's a whole different story. So first thing you'll notice, I just want to point out, is it does come with six individual legs. They're very nicely built. I thought the build experience for this set was really fun, so I'll definitely give it that. I love that you just push down on it, and it has some serious ability to you know move around and has some stress factors there, so it can it can take a bit of a beating. Uh, it also does come with these two arm clamps, one on each side that are attached to a ball joint. And the great thing about these is you could take them and you could load up your favorite minifigure in them, like Bo-Katan, or just a kind of mid minifigure like Mando. Uh, but yeah, so then you have the little neck with this little contraption and the little eyes and everything, and you can move it down like one bit and move it up one bit. So nothing crazy there. I do, however, like the little tubing that goes around. I thought it was built very creatively, if you could see that. And then up top, there is probably the only cool play feature about this set, which leads to a really frustrating feature. And it is this little guy. It is uh, a stud shooter that just kind of pops out of his, his back. And it makes the set look a little more, more complete, if that makes sense. And you could have like Bo-Katan fighting around and you could angle his neck a little bit. And you could like have him like move around and you could shoot if it doesn't push down. So you have to like hold it like this. And I just shot it into a shelf and it's going down now. And then we're gonna just Put, put that down. It's a very cool little feature. It's nothing crazy. We'll shoot the other one while we're at it. Pew! There we go. Uh, it's now on a shelf as well. All right, so that is that build. Uh, and there's nothing really much to say other than that. It's uh, interestingly detailed. I do like the way the arms can move around to where you need them. It's like the uh, shiny crab uh, from, what is it called, Moana? Uh, you know, it's so shiny, like a, that one. Uh, anyway, it looks it looks it looks like garbage, but you know we're gonna we're gonna get into that now in my thoughts portion of the video because because I don't want to say nice things about it anymore. Now l let's just be practical about this for a second. Take this minifigure out, replace it with one of those weird aliens that appeared in the Mando season three finale. Take that figure out, or make it like the downgraded version of the Clone Wars version. Everyone will say this is the worst set of the year. This would be the worst set of the year just objectively. It is based off of this thing that had a very minor role early on in Mando season three. And it sucks. It really sucks. It is a terrible, terrible design, uh, you know, of a build you want. Do you ask yourself, when you look at this, do you see you having this on your shelf four years from now, three years from now, will you remember what it is, what it was from? Was that such an iconic scene for you that you feel you need to get a Lego set of it? I'm gonna guess no. And the first thing I saw, thought when I saw this Lego Star Wars set was, that's going to sit on my shelves, it's going to collect dust, and I'm gonna get frustrated with it. Like that's literally the role of this set. It has like no crazy play features, and something I didn't even cover, because this set sucks that much, because it's weirdly worked in is you, you take off the stud shooters or whatever, you take these guys in, you lift this, and they leave room for a character. See, there's like a little bed there with a little control panel, and you could actually fit a minifigure in there, kind of. But there is not, there, the actual alien isn't there, and look, you can't even close it all the way. So you like kind of close it, like, like what? Uh, and you could fit a kind of minifigure in there, okay. If you, you give it a push, you can close it. Now, I made a video about this general issue a long time ago, uh, and it is in regards to LEGO putting out sets earlier than they need 
to be. The pictures for this set came out pretty much right after the episode aired, which means that this set was built based purely also off of concept art. It was not based off of actual shots from the show where they could reference different things, and they had a bunch of different options of sets to choose from. They could have done any Mandal cool Mandalore scene, but they didn't. And it, it was given to them. They gave got the, all they got. Star Wars sent them some weird concept arts, and they had to push it out so that way they could show you some toy that came out so you could pre-order it for, uh, I guess, I don't know, cheddar cheese. But it's not going to produce that because it's ugly. The only thing going for this set is it has one of the most gorgeous minifigures of all time, which is a lot, to be honest. It has a lot going for it. But, however, the build is terrible. They did not need to make it. It does not look like the guy. It does not come with the alien that even lived in there. Even if it did, it still would have sucked. But it doesn't even come with the alien who lives in the droid, in the in this spider droid, spider tank, whatever. I, I don't I don't even know this, the I'm thinking separatist spider droids. You know the actual cool ones, and. It's, it's just frustrating, because it's not an army-affiliated thing. You can't build an army of these. You can't do anything special. It was killed the first time it showed up in a Star Wars. It's like if Star Wars just built one of those random aliens that just showed up in The Mandalorian, which is like every other episode. And this is just one of the generic aliens, and I hate it. It was a tar terrible set selection, and the actual concept art they're building off of, they're just doing it because that's all they had to work with. I'd rather they wait for the episode to come out, wait a year or two, and then we actually get some good sets. This is the same issue I had with like the N1 Starfighter. They could have made that a lot cooler, but they didn't. This is the same issue I had with the Darth Vader versus Obi-Wan set. They could have done the based off of the actual cool scene from the show, but they didn't. This is a very common theme in Star Wars, so like I'm not surprised, but it is still frustrating as anything. So I give this set, this is the first time I think I'm ever going to do this, I'm going to give this LEGO Star Wars set a 2. And all two points go to this minifigure. Uh, this minifigure carried that too. It would be a zero if it was not that. Actually, I'll, I'll do a three. It's that nice of a minifigure. It is really gorgeous. It is, I'd say, arguably one of the best LEGO Star Wars minifigures of all time. Top ten. In this garbage of a LEGO Star Wars set. I don't care what people say. I know some people said, oh, I think it's cool. That's That looks good. No, it doesn't. It sucks. It sucks. It sucks. I hate it. Don't buy it. Or, or if you do, if you do decide to buy it, if I've compelled you, and it's not on giant clearance on Amazon, I will leave a link in the description, probably, to, to buy it, if, if I remember. I don't know if y'all got the message, but but no, this, this trash. Don't, don't, don't buy it. Don't buy it. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed me ranting at a LEGO Star Wars set for like a couple minutes. I uh, hope it added some value to your day. I'll see you all in the next one. We're going to review some actually good LEGO Star Wars sets after this. So, peace out and stay awesome.